Hi everyone, uh, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our presentation. Uh, this is for a study that we did for all that for uh, evaluation of reserve shear capacity of uh, bridge peer caps using the deep beam theory. So peer caps, um, I like these type of structures because these are not your typical structural elements. You see them a lot um, because uh, every bridge has a couple of them at least. And their purpose is to move the loads from the superstructure or girders to uh, the columns. These type of elements are really deep, uh, stiff, because uh, we don't want to see any deflections. Um, if they deflect, you would end up with serviceability problems. Uh, excessive deflections, deformations is, are something that we really don't uh, want to see. For that reason, uh, these type of elements are uh, typically deep, only in Ohio, we have about 28,000 bridges. And if you consider uh, multiple peer caps for every bridge, you end up with 600,000 uh, peer caps. And if you extrapolate uh, this to uh, the nation, you end up with one to two million uh, peer caps easily. So that's a really, really large, uh, really large number. In a traditional design environment in an office, what we do is to use sectional method. What is sectional method is, I know you uh, know this very well. You have a structure, you determine the most critical uh, location for the shear force, as well as for the bending moment. Um, and you check the acting forces with the capacities at these critical locations. And accordingly, you make um, your design or assessment. So that's the sectional method that we use a lot uh, in practice. The issue happens if you use this sectional method to analyze a deep member, such as a peer cap. If that happens, you are going to find uh, these members to be overloaded, especially the ones which are constructed 30 years or 40 years ago um, using the sectional method. However, if you go on site and inspect these bridges, uh, you will see them, they are perfectly fine. They don't have any uh, exhibit of distress, no cracking. They seem really fine. But when you do the sectional method, it gives you overload. So the research question is, uh, what is going on? Why uh, we get low capacities, we find overloads using the sectional method. Uh, method. So that's the problem we try to tackle in this study. So again, the decision comes down to the limited funding. If you are finding most of the existing bridges overloaded, uh, you have to rehabilitate, strengthen them, and we don't have funds to retrofit uh, all of them. So that's the critical uh, critical issue. And in this study, we try to create a methodology to uh, determine uh, the accurate capacities of these type of elements. So that's the first objective in this study. And it's not enough to develop a methodology. You need to develop a computer tool so that you can apply this easily, quickly in practice so that all that engineers as well as uh, other engineers can use this tool and do the capacity assessment uh, using deep beam theory uh, and benefit from the findings of this study. Of course, any tool should be verified, and we verified it uh, using uh, a large number of existing bridges that we got from uh, ODOT, and we made sure that the procedure runs uh, correctly. And we also compared the results with nonlinear FEM as well as sectional analysis method. Uh, again, sectional method should not be used, but we just used it uh, to uh, compare uh, how it uh, it compares with uh, the STM cap. Uh, this is done by Professor Kani long time ago at the University of Toronto, Canada. And what he did was to test a number of beams with different depths. And he just plotted the experimental data with those uh, square points. And uh, if you look, the horizontal axis represents shear span to depth ratio. So this is important uh, because that represents how deep the beam is. So if you look, uh, this beam has two shear span to depth ratio. 
Uh, the first one is A1 divided by effective depth. The second one is A2 divided by effective depth. So he just plotted these experimental results. Um, and then he ran hand calculations. He analyzed these beams using traditional sectional method, and that's what he got. And then he used certain time method, and he analyzed the same beams using SDM. That's what he got. As you can see, there are some regions in which they perform very well. So if you look at the sectional method, this region is perfect. So if you look anything above shear span depth ratio greater than 2.5, it's perfect prediction. Uh, we should use that. We should use sectional method as we do on a daily basis. But less than 2.5, sectional method is going to be super conservative because this is the shear capacity. It's normalized based on concrete strength F prime C. The larger the value, the larger the capacity. So if you take a peer cap in this region, analyze it with sectional method, this is going to be your capacity, right? And if you analyze the same thing using certain type, you are going to get three times larger capacity. So that experimental plot, although it has been done, uh, it was done a long time ago, it really shows the full uh, story. So this is the region that we want to benefit from the DBM action by using the certain type method. So if you have a beam, the first thing you should do is to uh, calculate shear span to depth ratio, which is A to D, which I showed you previously. Uh, this ratio uh, can be less than two or it can be more than two, uh, depending on this critical number uh, you decide. Uh, whether it's deep or not. If it's less than two, it's a deep member. Uh, if it is more than two, it's a slender member. If it's a deep member, you have two options, which both of them we tried, and I'm going to show you the results. Uh, you can analyze it uh, using a certain type method as well as nonlinear analysis. Our focus is certain type, but also we did nonlinear analysis that I'm going to present the results. Uh, this is just a practical. Uh methodology to determine the disturbed regions, the deep regions. So you can just draw a, a square area, which is H by H, right? And you just need to put this on both sides of each point load as well as each support. So you put one. These are deep regions. See, the entire thing is deep region in this case. You just put over there. So you see typically these structures and higher uh, peer cap ends up being deep because the distances are very short um, in this example. So methodology is to use certain time method. This is really a simple method. Uh, it is simpler than the sectional method. Um, if you, you have, I'm sure you have seen lots of historical buildings in Europe, in other parts of the world. And at that time, they had no idea what the bending moment is, what the shear force diagram is. And the only thing probably they can visualize was tension compression, how the force go from one point to the other point. That's how this method works, really basic, really simple. Uh, so if you have compression applied at this point, you can visualize that it's going to the support using the straight um, shortest link, shortest path. So I teach this in my classes saying that the stress are they prefer the shortest, easiest path to go from point A to point B, right? So there's no other path. This would go to this location. This one will spread into two, so half probably would go here. The other part would go there. So these are the compression uh, forces, how they travel uh, within a beam. And based on this, you see this is a certain type model. You put compression elements. And then in between, you need tension, because if you put this compression, this would try to spread it up, and then you are going to get tension, and you put your time. So these are uh, what elements you have to deal with in a certain time model. You have to deal with a compression strut, which is the main element. You have to deal with, or size, analyze a tension tie, uh, which links it. Otherwise, it would spread open, and you would get a big crack uh, at the sancroid. And also the nodal zone, because you also need to check the capacity of the nodal zone. Uh, so three things to check, struts, ties, and nodes. And struts represent compression, ties represent tension, and nodes represent 
connection. So nodes might have one face might be under compression, other face might be under tension. So nodes are definitely more complicated than uh, stress and ties. So you will spend most time checking the nodes in this one. That's just a real uh, peer cap. And I told Papa that when we were driving today, we might have passed this because these are in Columbus area. Uh, we analyzed, uh, I think, more than 10 of them. So this is one of them. Uh, you can see, you can determine whether this is deep or not. This is the depth, right? This is H. And just look at this distance, for example. This looks like 1.4, 1.5 H. Yes, that's deep. It's less than 2. So if you look at this distance, it's probably 0.5 H. So she is the depth ratio in this situation is just 0 0.5. So this region is super deep because there is really a very uh, steep strut going into the support. So by visually inspecting it, you can understand how deep it is. Uh, if there is some distance, you can use a tie. You can send the compression stress at this point, lift it up with a tie, which is going to be tension. That's going to be your stirrup, and then send it again to the support. So that is a stress flow if you have some distance. Still less than two, the ratio, but uh, if permitted, if, if you want, this would be an efficient model to do. So you can see these are uh, compression struts. These are tension ties. It can be the main reinforcement or it can be a strap. It is a band. It's not just one strap. So you might have a number of 10 strap bands and you just combine them and you represent them with one tie uh, per span. And you have nodes. For example, if you look at this node, this side is under tension. All other, all other three sides are under compression. So each node will have a different situation. This is the same thing. This is called compression, compression, tension type of node. Um, the best type of node is, is everything is compression. So that would give you the best capacity. So this is a nice node, compression, compression. So that's how you uh, deal with it. So STM is complex for daily design. It's a simple procedure, but it's graphical. Uh, I think as faculty members, we are partly to blame. We don't teach this in undergraduate education. We don't even mention what certain time method is. Uh, the reason for this is that deep members are very uncommon. Most buildings, most structures, we always design slender members because they are economical, they are easy to construct. And slender members are analyzed by sectional methods. So pretty much in all universities in the United States, it's a typical procedure to teach sectional method for slender members. Don't mention deep members because certain time teaching takes a lot of time. You don't want to spend three weeks teaching something which doesn't have a big applicability, right? So that's one of the reasons. But two types of uh, elements are important because they are deep peer caps and foundation. So if you end up uh, like you do on a daily basis on a career analyzing these things, the only thing you would need to know is certain time method. So uh, there is no check. If you create a wrong model, uh, you cannot really check whether it's right or wrong. So there is a bit of a conceptual model development, uh, which is making it a bit complex. And also, it's an iterative process. You develop a graphical model, you solve it, and it is never a single step process. At least it takes two times refinement or maybe three times refinement if you really want to get a very good, efficient model. So. These are uh, the complexities. And in this study, we try to explore innovative strategies to automate this, to create a model which is right at all applications, because this is only for one type of structure, and we know what model is most efficient, uh, and reduce the complexity to a level uh, which is similar to the sectional method. So as a result, we developed a computational tool uh, which we named it as certain time method for peer caps or STM cap. So Papu uh, spent a lot of time on this. This is the logo that he created for this. Uh, it is a code. Uh, he wrote about 5,000 lines, 16 modules. Uh, it's a computer code. We didn't want to create a new program because you need to learn something new. We incorporated this into Excel. Right, so you can just open Excel. Everybody has Excel. Nothing needs to be installed, and you just use it. 
one thing which is uh, innovative for this code is that it shows you graphically. You input all the dimensions and you see color-coded graphical structure drawn for you to scale. So you see how the struts is forming, how the ties forming, and so on. So that's, I think, the, the, the part that we spend lots of time and you will see input drawing, output drawing, hydros. You can see lots of subroutines just to display uh, the geometry. 